story elevator that you could just drive your car right into because indeed it was jewelers who were uh, the occupants and they didn't want to take the very valuable wares out on the street. And that was completed in 1926 and designed by Yaver and Dinkelberg. Those are not actually temples. They did hold emergency water tanks and that is because, as we said, this is a city that's terrified of fire. So just in case the fire department's late, this building packs its own water. <coughs> now again on our left, we have a very monumental gray building with stainless steel insets. And this is the Leo Burnett building. It was completed in 1989 and it was designed by Kevin Roach and John Dinkaloo. Kevin Roach is a very noted, award-winning Irish architect. And he was a great admirer of the early architectural giants here in Chicago. And these architects were known for the monumentality of their skyscrapers. As we come out from under the next bridge, I want you to look, again on your left, at the level of the river and look at the bridge house there. There's a, concept, uh, uh, there's a concept in architecture called contextualism. And that's where a building harmonizes with either its built or natural environment. And Kevin Roach does this. So we see this very modern bridge house. We have one on each corner with its very flat roof. Then look at the roof level or the cornice level of the Leo Burnett building with its very flat roof. And that is an homage to these bridges. Now again on our left, we have a building with triangles on the top, reflective glass and white stone. This is 77 West Wacker and it's designed by Ricardo Bofield with De Stefano and partners. It's completed in 1992. Those are not triangles. Those are pediments, like you would see on the Parthenon, on the Acropolis. So Bobiel is also hearkening back to earlier points in the Western tradition. But he is doing so in a playful, whimsical, and exaggerated way not in the very reverential way that we saw with uh, Beaux-Arts. Beauville has said that architecture is theater and that classicism is the new modernism. Now, we're going to be going past a number of rooms of what is called the river walk. And everywhere we go, we pass back and forth. So if you have trouble seeing it because you're on the right now, you'll see it on our way back. Uh, but the River Walk, the first portions were completed in 2005, and the second portions were begun in 2014 and are ongoing. Carol Ross Barney designed them, and the landscape architect is Sasaki and Associates. This is Theater of the River. We're the theater. Just sit on the steps and watch us go by. We'll talk more about it in a moment, but I want to point out the sand-colored building that looks like an armchair. This is the LaSalle Wacker Building, completed in 1930, designed by Halliburton Root. It is an Art Deco building. Art Deco is the dominant architectural style in the 20s and the 30s that has to do with the ornamentation, which we cannot see too clearly on this building, but we will see on many others. The armchair shape was dictated by a 1923 ordinance that said if you go over 20 stories, you've got to set the building back from the lot of the so over and over again in Chicago, we see that throne or armchair-like shape. Here we are at another room of the River Walk, which is under construction behind those barges. The idea of the River Walk was this. Chicagoans had always had a very intimate relationship with the lakefront. But the river was commercial, and the river was polluted, and then the city turned its back on the river. Well, in the last 30 years, the river has become a tremendous amenity, as it is in so many other great cities. And the River Walk, these rooms, are places where you and I, anybody in the general public, can enjoy the river. It's all public access, it's all free. So you don't need to work or live on the river to enjoy it. buildings in a row, look at the very tippy top, it looks like it has bows on it, that's 225 West Wacker, all three buildings were designed by Cohen Pedersen Fox, the 
the building with the bows was completed in 1989. Those are not bows, those are pyramidal towers because there are so many pyramids on the river, because there are so many Art Deco buildings. And in 1922, Howard Carter discovered King Tut's tomb, the first and the only unlooted uh, uh, tomb that we have ever seen, and the world has Egypt mania. Now coming into view is a gorgeous blue-green building. This was completed in 1983. I want you to put yourself in the mindset of people there. There have been three decades of that kind of postmodern building that we saw in the Fidelity building. And here's this gorgeous, curvaceous building. It is voted repeatedly Chicago its favorite modern building. The color is the color of the water of the river here. The shape is the shape of the river here. There's a grid on it, and Chicago is on a grid, and then it paints the city back to us. Next to it, the uh, silvery blue building is 191 North Wacker, and that is the site where Abraham Lincoln was nominated as the Republican candidate for President of the United States in 1860. Now we have been on the main stem of the river and we are turning onto the north stem of the river. River, And on your right, there's a very slender, bluish building. This is Wolf Point Development, Wolf Point West. It is a residence and they're renting now. It was completed in 2015 by BKL Architects. It is one of three very slender towers that are going to go up here because they cannot, their challenge is they cannot hide more than 50% of the view from that building that says Times to us, Sun Times building. And that will be quite a challenge. Now if we look on our left, we see an older building which is curved inward, very narrow. This is residence at River Bend, completed in 1992 designed by Papa George Haynes. It is indeed just one apartment deep. The narrowness was dictated by railroad tracks in the river. So everybody has a beautiful view of the north stem of the river. It is so narrow that, uh, that cars are taken up and down in an elevator. There, there's no room 